put it on your, you, there you are. We're on there. We're uh, recording, dear. All right, I am putting this on, and I don't think the people who can see us yeah. will be able to hear the music. No, they won't. Okay, ready? And I've yet to find a workaround for this. <laughs> Hey, 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 guys, it's Allison from Allison Answers with Ryan Albrecht that I never, ever introduced. <laughs> hey, guys, it's Allison from Allison Answers and Ryan Albrecht. Do I say your name right? Yes. Yes, you do. You know what? I never, ever, as long as I've known you, I always feel uncomfortable saying your last name. But anyhow, a lot of different ways, yeah. I have to say something to everybody now. It's very important. Are you ready, Ryan? I'm ready. I'm coming before you like this. Utter shame. I was laying in bed. It was like three in the morning. And like suddenly like electric went through my body and went, oh my God. I never ever introduce Ryan on the podcast, ever. It's just like Ryan's there. He's like the microphone, for God's sakes. I just, I'm sorry, no, Ryan, I don't really mean that as a person. I don't feel that way about you, but I just didn't introduce you. That's sick. I never even noticed. That's even sicker. Okay, we got some problems here. Yeah. But yeah, so, I was selfish enough not to introduce him, and he's selfless enough not to care or even notice. Dude. We're a good team, Ryan. We yeah. work well together. It's work. It's work. My it's work. selfishness and your selflessness, it works. Okay. <laughs> right in the box. Yeah, it works. So, so Ryan, seriously, I am, can you forgive me? Yeah, of course. I Virtual can. hug. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry to you, to your family your family's family your ancestors your ancestors i can't your get my chair right. and their children. Your okay children your children's children okay listen ryan yes oh because we can't even talk about epigenetics because really in epigenetics if you think that you're not enough self then your thought is going to change your gene expression which is going to create a protein that's going to impact your children so we have to not, well, <laughs> did you look at something? Did you get it like something happened? It was a light bulb off, over your head. Staring through the generations. <laughs> <laughs> you just saw all your children like selfless and sitting there ignored in the crowd. No. Uh, <laughs> but anyhow, okay, so today we're just so happy to be here. Oh, and let me introduce properly Ryan Albrecht. I wish I had clapping. We could probably work. I'm that gonna play out. some music for that. We have Ryan Albrecht. Oh man. Oh, it went too short. Ryan. Now this man, Ryan, not only is a good, <laughs> is a good friend. He's also a great employee. He's also a therapist which we just loosely mention. I give a whole introduction about myself, everything about my life. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ryan, oh, there's Ryan. Ryan's a therapist. He works for Lager Counseling Services. And he is also a man of faith, but a reasonable man of faith, not one of those freaks who you just want to run a million miles away from and just like, oh my God, is this person serious? But anyhow, he's like just a normal person. Like you can curse in front of him. I believe he drops a few curses himself, but I'll just keep that to myself. But anyhow, no, not me. and you don't, do you not curse? You oh, curse. No, I, no, I do. Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. Shh. You do. Yeah. Okay. I've heard you curse. Regularly. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> okay. So I now. Help all, if expletives are good for self-expression. They yeah. are. Yeah. They are good for self-expression. Yeah. I agree with that. So now, and it's not, yeah, a curse is, is not like, oh God, now he hates me. Now God hates me because I cursed. Where do we, what? I don't know. 
Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Hmm. I think that's true. But the cursing way that we curse is funny. We're just like making, like, we just want, actually, I think we just really want to be funny. That's the only reason I curse. I just think it's so funny. Yeah. And it's so strong of an expression. You're probably like, can you get to the topic for God's sakes? No. No, no Ryan. No, definitely not. You're not? Okay. No, no. You see my eyes moving and it's, it's just trying to place things on the screen and spots. That's all. You can't find me. I can't find myself, Ryan. But anyhow, I'm kidding. Uh, so <laughs> what I want to say about Ryan is that Ryan is a therapist, but, and really people really love him. And he is, you know, the minority in our, um, I don't know what you'd call what we do, our practice, a bunch of women, a lot of women, mm. Ryan. And then also with Ryan, Ryan is a, a musician. Mm -hmm. And he's absolutely an amazing musician, actually. It's like a little side note. Ryan is like, um, I, I want to play a little clip. I wish I had one. Like, so Ryan does worship music, actually, in a church. So he's, um, and so does his wife. And um, he plays a guitar and he sings and his wife, Ellie, also sings and they're having a baby. Should I not be saying all this personal stuff? No, it's all fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to make Ryan like visible here because he's a good egg. Okay. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk today about um, the re-entry into society uh. and how it's impacting everyone in all different ways and, you know, maybe just give our two cents about, you know, maybe some good ways to cope with that. Um, I'm, I want to continue to remind everybody and remind myself what our mission is. So um, I gave it a name, Ryan. I, I, I actually gave the mission a name. Uh -oh, You're gonna it? love it. Maybe not, maybe you won't love it. Mission Awake. I can get behind that. I can too. Yeah. You know, we, we may change it next week. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Mission Awake, basically, the idea is that we just want to help people to be able to see how they have been conformed to the world they were born into and how that conformity continues to impact every thought, every feeling and every decision they make in their life and how a lot of people are living a life of mediocrity that they don't want to be living with people they don't want to be living with in ways they don't want to be living. And they just think this is their lot in life. This is their destiny. And we don't believe that. We believe we want to wake up people to see that they have more power and more choice, that we're divine creatures and we are made for creating and we're creative beings. And we through thought and through, um, we can create the lives that we're meant to live. So in that as the background, we also want to be able to, any circumstance that comes our way, like all of the social unrest, all of the um, unprecedented experiences over the world that we've been a part of, we're a part of world history. Um, that we want to be able to have that in the background as an understanding because the way that we are and the way that we've been kind of programmed by our childhood and, and the meaning that we've chat attached to the events in our childhood continue to keep us on a path that very often we don't want to be on. So we'll be reacting in ways that cause the same kind of problems that they have always caused. So it doesn't really matter what the external environment is, even though our external environment with the pandemic and the civil unrest, that is so big that I never ever believe that the external, no matter how big it is, is bigger than what's going on in our being. And that our the being that you know, I believe was created by God, but it's, I, I think, a supernatural being. So we, we have so much more inside of us um, than we even know. So even though we're so powerless, 
you know, you know, obviously this, a, such a greater force, greater than us, but there is, there also, we have a lot of power in deciding how things go. So in light of the changes, so we all got shut in and that brought up so much crap, you know, all family stuff. Well, you can't imagine the stuff we see, you know, relapses with drugs and alcohol, people returning. I, I say it's like recycling relationships. No one can date. So they go back to their old oh, yeah. crappy relationships one at a time. Yeah. Let me just go back. Maybe it'll work this time in the pandemic. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I wish I had, I need one of those like, wah, wah. do I have one? Oh, I do. What's that sound? <laughs> yeah. Go back to the recycled relationships. <laughs> Playing the scary sound, Ryan. Yes. I oh, yeah. That's scary. <laughs> and people are asking me, so what do you think? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, not so much. Yeah. Okay. So now we're, we have that. We were shut in. And everybody was kind of scrambling to re adjust, which were beautifully resilient. And I hope so many of you have gained so much by being shut in, because let me tell you something, it was a time for growth and change. Now we have another thing happening where we're opening up and we're transitioning. I'm finding a lot of people afraid. A lot of people are fighting with one another about that. How fast? We're opening up too fast. We're opening up too slow. There's so much unrest. So I think we want to encourage you to stay within the three feet around you. That's the only thing we have control over. And we have tremendous control over our environment by being in charge of ourselves, by, by creating new healthy thoughts as opposed to old, obsolete, archaic thoughts that brought you to those old, awful, obviously recycled relationships and old ways of relating that you didn't like. So Ryan, what do you think? What's your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I mean, the reopening is even for me personally, it's it's kind of like dipping my toe in the water a little bit. Um because typically I'm very uh you know, cavalier, you know, like I don't care often or previously I didn't. You know, like I was like, oh, everything will be fine. We'll work this out, you know. Um, you know, the pregnant wife definitely threw some different considerations in there um but also the need the like the desire to detach from like the madness like there's a there is some like sense of like i don't know like empathic confusion when i go out to certain places like say the supermarket or whatever like i just feel a thing you know like it's there yeah. it's, it's this tense thing and then um you might experience that and then maybe drive to my neighborhood and it's juxtaposed with, you know, 20 year olds drinking on the street and having <laughs> house parties. Exactly. Um, which feels initially like a direct threat to my family's safety, you know, like my first instinct, which is not an instinct I'm used to having because I wasn't a father to be true. I've always been protective, but like things are definitely have gone to a different level. So that, that my experience is definitely colored by that. I'm aware of it, you know, but um, again, I think that the choice for me is to engage in the places I'm comfortable engaging. And so um, I'm not going to a house party. I'm not with 40 people at it, you know, 50, that, no, I'm good there. Um, I'll give it a couple of weeks to go get a seating at the restaurant I want to go to. You know, maybe I won't make it a Saturday night when the town's going going off especially your street. town ryan yeah you know and like sodom and gomorrah over there yeah, crazy over there. <laughs> and sorry. then thankfully at the end of the month i'll be on the other side of the town and it, this won't be in my orbit directly but i mean i'm re-engaging family you know um and we had a couple of we did a, like a small get together with a, another couple or two outside and we ate and if it got really comfortable really fast and then of course still like trying to go see the grandparents um you know sitting outside saying hello to them doing stuff like that and so the only way to push against some of the anxiety that can come up is to to do those behaviors right like it's picking the thing i know that's worth it 
for me, you know, like, oh, I want to see family. That is a motivating factor for me to go and not be an idiot about it. And and see, because I think the social stuff is 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 really big. It's really affecting a lot of people, but even just in terms of reintegrating, it's putting another question mark on it. it like what happens? You know, we have a 14 day incubation period. Okay. Certain states are going up like New York's flat. What happens? Are we wasting too much energy integrating? I've had this thought, like, should we be integrating it? Like, or, or is next or month going to be like, Oh, pull back, <laughs> pull back everybody. Like on Saturday, you know, Cuomo was like, we're getting tons of complaints. I might hold phases up, you know? And it's like, yeah. well, oh, for, I, I'm just going to stay behind the curve personally. <laughs> so I don't have to go, oh, this feels great, and pull back again. I'm just going to stay comfortably behind it. Behind the pack, following. The pack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Instead of, a, like, not up to the lead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not blazing a trail on this one. I think typically <laughs> I'm fine with being up in the front. But I think for this one, I'm just going to wait because I just – it's honestly the up and down is worse than, than just being – integrated slowly and, and intelligently you know you know it's funny because it's i guess the real thing is is that it's unknown yeah. that's that has been i think the predominant factor in all of this is that and what is fear fear is all based in unknown it's all future based it's all about what's going to happen and we're still in that state and it's funny because um what i always suggest is that we want to listen to factual information. And then um, I actually even said it to a good friend of mine, like we're wise women, you listen to factual information, and then you pull back. And then you think about what you heard. And you think about how you want to integrate that into your own life. You, we, I think anything that's reactionary, oh. anything, anything that's quick, you know, jump in, I'm going to do that react quick when it comes to things like this you know me i jump into freaking everything so it sounds so counter me i'm like oh that's a great idea where, where do i sign that's a good idea i'm i'll do that i'm fine with that but not this i'm not like that with yeah. things like this yeah. so um you know because that's like having a little wisdom you know because also i think it's about caring about other people so for me it's not just like as a leader of the business, I feel like, you know, all the people who work for me, for all the clients, there's so many people involved that I can say what I think. I tend to really be very not afraid of, I'm not, I, I always think I'm going to be healthy. I always believe I'm going to be healthy. I believe in the power of my mind. I believe that my mind controls my body. I believe that my body creates proteins of health and and vibrance and enthusiasm all the time. And I tell myself that if somebody even comes in and they're talking about some health issue, I'm always thinking about, yeah, but Allison, you are strong and mighty in that body of yours. So I'm like, I really believe that. So I always think that I'm healthy. So, and I, and I think that is a very, I just, I'm going to say an aside to this before I, wait, don't let me do this, Ryan. Remember the thing about thought and body and remind me to say it right after this because I'm going to leave the topic. I'll make a note. Thank you. Uh, so that, that I'm going to blame you for, going, for me going off. So now the idea is this, that when we're, when we're considering things that we don't understand to pull back and to say, what, what do I know about this currently? And how do I feel or think? And if you're a praying person, I am. So I feel like, you know, God, what do you think? Or your higher power, whatever you believe, um, you know, to really just contemplate what, what would be the best course of action for me, for my family? My son has diabetes. He has had lung problems since he's a little kid. I don't want him to get this. That's pretty serious. So... And then when I'm considering all the people, like we were just saying, like all the people who, who work at Lager Counseling Services, like I feel like we have to consider other people. When we go to a store, let's say there's a person there who's just super, super afraid and you're not. Like to me, wear the freaking mask as a gracious understanding for another human being. 
-hmm. whether you believe it or not. To me, I feel like we get so caught up in like fighting for something that we're losing sight of loving and caring for others. So I don't want to get into a whole controversial thing where people are giving me hate comments or whatever, but I just really think err on the side of love. So now with this whole, um, this whole idea of re-entering, the thing I want to say that I think is very, uh, this is part of that whole mission awake, the whole world is not understanding a very simple concept and that literally our thoughts are actually physical things. And I'm not saying that based on some woo-woo-woo thing like that you hear about like hokey stuff. This is actually neurological. It's science. Mm -hmm. It's fact. So basically, everything, all the systems of our body create proteins, right? And our genes, our genes, it's not what genes and what, what opportunities are in our genes like the 35,000 different variations in one gene, it's the expression of the gene. So the expression of the gene comes from the thought. So when you're feeding your body, and this is actually necessary in times like this, to be feed consciously, like you would take a vitamin C in the morning, mm. to communicate to your body things that you want your body to do because you're, then your genes will express that and create proteins that are like super powers, literally. Like we have so much power physiologically just in this machine that we're forgetting. And, and when we're thinking chronically negative thoughts, you're opening your body up to all viruses cancer, different autoimmune illnesses. This is a real thing. This, I'm not making this up. The, the amount of stress in our society right now, Ryan, is literally creating illness. Fact, 85% of illnesses come from stress. This is a fact. Why we're pumping up like people with um, medication, I don't know. I mean, I actually... Watch now, somebody's gonna like come into some like pharmacy, like, like bad person's gonna come and like gag me and kill me. And they'll be like, What happened to Allison? She mentioned the pharmacy thing, the whole, the whole, um, you know, uh, what the big business. I gotta stop. You gotta cut this out of here. Oh, yeah, we can't, we can't go into big pharma right now. That's a whole other. Oh, no, don't. No, because we'll get killed, Ryan. Yeah, I'm telling I mean, you. I don't mind getting killed over something like that. But you don't? I, think, I do. I think, I think it's a two-hour <laughs> We got to go. <laughs> we can't keep talking about this. It's don't 10 o'clock. Listen, I have to say long something long. to you guys. This is all I have to say about today. This is the shortest podcast ever because Ryan thing. honestly did not get coffee today, and he has a client <laughs> at 10, 15. <laughs> and we, you know what? We're taking care of that shit. Okay? We're, so this is, we're problem solvers here. We're here's problem solvers. <laughs> yeah. So listen, you got something to do and you're like, so now this is a really short podcast. You don't have to do anything. This is what we want you to think about. Bottom line is think about how you want to re-enter. Think about my dad said to me when I was learning how to drive, I'm like, oh, dad, I'm so scared. I don't even want to drive a car. He said, Allison, just think of it this way. See that, that pedal right there? You can push it down as hard as you want or as soft as you want. You can go as fast as you want. You can go as slow as you want. You have complete control. And that's the truth. We do not have... If you give in to fear and you start thinking fearful thoughts, your body's going to react and you're going to feel worse and worse and worse. If you look at your environment and you stay in the now and you say, am I safe now? Yes, I am. Right in this moment, I'm okay. So when I go to a store, how do I want to do it? And Ryan was explaining, given your circumstance and err on the side of love. We're going to continue. We're going we're gonna to piggyback yeah. on this and talk more about the, uh, this the next time. I'm going to play the outro. So actually, Ryan can go and get his damn cup of coffee. Okay? Because Ryan is not invisible anymore. So don't let yourself be invisible. Mm. Bow. That's wrong. Can fix it. Don't worry want to thank you guys so much for listening you are awesome and i hope you have the best day when you go out there please remember we're just a part of world history and you know what's really cool 
We can change the world history by waking up. So join us in Mission Awake. Ryan, what do you want to say? Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Be empowered, guys. We're I done. Actually, I can actually hear the music. You could? I yeah. gotta shut this off. because Something with the settings. Yeah. Oh. But da, da, da. Okay, guys who are watching us, you just watched us shut off the whole audio. Now we're going to say goodbye to you. Bye, guys. Adios. Have a beautiful, lovely, wonderful day. Namaste. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>